What's going on guys? My name is Clint Fletcher. My YouTube channel is CaliWRX. This right here is my 2014 Subaru WRX hatchback, also known as Makah, M-A-K-A. Whole other story, but it is three years old now, and it's pushing 500 wheel horsepower by 475 torque. And this is gonna be its walk around. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. We're first going to start off with the engine modifications. Now, I'm not going to show everything, but I'm going to do a full parts overview. So, I'll bring you guys closer to the engine, show you what's in there. Alright, so what we're going to do is, this is a built block. It is built by Adam at AA Motorworks. My name is Adam Aquino, and I'm the owner and technician here at AA Motorworks. It's a LIC pinned EJ25. Now, this is going to sound like I'm reading a list because I am reading a list. But we went with dart and sleeves, manly pistons, manly turbo tough rods, king bearings, engine gasket set, ARP 625 head studs, GSC valves, GSC stage 1 cams with springs and retainers, the air pump blocker, and then of course you have machine shop labor. It is tuned by snail performance. As you can see on the intake, I have a snail performance snail performance sticker. The turbo of choice is a FB Green 8 centimeter hot sod. We're running the Cobb Flex Fuel Kit with the Cobb Access Port and the Cobb SF Intake with the Cobb Turbo Inlet Hose. As you guys can see, I am running a upgraded top mount intercooler. It is the Grim Speed. Now you're probably going to ask why top mount versus front mount. Well, top mount is what I chose. Top mount is what I'm using. Top mount is what is working. So that's why I'm staying top mount. We're pairing that up with the Grim Speed 3 port boost control solenoid. The Grim Speed uh, top mount intercooler hose to the turbo. As you guys can see, if I zoom you in a bit, right here, where's my finger? Right there, we had to cut the Grim Speed hose because it was too big to fit to the actual turbo. Next up, we have a Turbo Smart compact bypass valve, a Turbo Smart fuel pressure regulator, an AEM 320 fuel pump. AM map sensor kit, IAG air oil separator, and then we have an IAG TGV delete, which are the black series, Killer B oil pickup, Ron Davis radiator plus oil cooler. As you guys can see right here, I'm saying as you guys can see a lot, but it is much fatter, I would say a quarter inch fatter than a Koyo radiator. And then underneath the actual radiator is the oil cooler, so it's a combo together. And then we have Gritty oil sandwich adapter and parent pitch stop. So that basically covers majority of the engine. What's here? What's uh, basically the heart of the beast? Now we upgraded some of the hoses to like Samco hoses. Uh, we're, I'm running, I believe, either 1050 oil or 1550. I've done so many oil changes on this. I've kind of forgotten, but it's a thick oil to keep this motor happy. Um, I'm running 27 pounds of boost on the 500 map and then I have a 460 map which is around 23 pounds 24 pounds of boost so for the majority of the time like if I track the car when I track the car we're definitely going to be using a lower boost map because we don't want to put so much stress on the heads cylinder walls stuff like that we don't want to lift another head we want this motor to be successful have a long life and be a successful track car so next we're going to move on to fueling which is around the back so let's move around to the trunk all right, so this is the fueling setup. You may wonder why am I showing the trunk? Well, it's because my main fuel setup is in the trunk. I am running the Radium surge tank with in-tank E85 400 pumps, two of them. We're also pairing that with Radium rails and uh, like I said before, a Turbo Smart fuel pressure regulator kit, injector dynamic 1700 cc injectors, and like I said before, we also have a AM320 pump. Right there is a Earl's flow filter we're using Earl's hoses and XRP basically those pairings together make sure that nothing's gonna leak nothing's gonna fall apart it's all gonna be nice and dandy as you can see there's two relay two relays pump one pump two so when I hit a certain amount of boost I believe it's six pounds pump two switches on which cycles the fuel from the surge tank and make sure the car's running well before I got the surge tank and I was running 460 we had a little bit of an issue where the car wasn't getting enough fuel so that basically opted for me to get a surge tank and why I didn't get a double hanger well because I plan to track this car a very or I plan to track this car a lot 
and I wanted to minimize slosh, um, fuel cuts, stuff like that. So with the surge tank, you're set basically. This surge tank setup will support north of 600 horsepower if I ever want to go for that. But that basically covers fuel. I'm going to move you back to the front of the car so we can talk about the drivetrain. Okay, so for this portion of the drivetrain, which you can't really see, uh, I did upgrade my transmission to a 2013 STI transmission. Uh, we did the SPT short throw shifter straight from Subaru itself. The ACT HD uh, clutch with a uh, ACT flywheel and pressure plate. And then I also have a carbon fiber drive shaft, which definitely, if you're on the fence of getting a carbon fiber drive shaft, it's highly worth it. The performance and aspects gains from it are enormous. A group end motor mount, group end transmission mount, and cob front and rear bushings for the shifter. I'm going to move on to suspension goodies, and that will be something that I am lacking that I need to get more onto, which is the next step of this build. But so far we're running ISC N1 coilovers, um, ISC lowering control arms, white line sway bars, 22 front, 20 rear, non-adjustable with carpoy end links front and rear. So that basically does it for suspension mods. And then moving on to wheel setup, which I guess I can show you guys now, is I have 18 by 9 plus 38 Work Emotion XT9s. They are powder coated. The closest color I could to, the closest color I could get to satin white pearl. They're like a metallic ice pearl. They're wrapped in Michelin Pilot Super Sports 265, 35, 18, and then I have tire stickers. And if you want to use a coupon for tire stickers, please use Cali WRX in the promo code. The tire I am sitting on the wheel are my track set. By the time you're watching this video, I'll probably be needing new track tires. These ones are RS3s. Uh, the tire or the wheel that they're on are Ambit FF2 Plasma Blue, sent out to me for a sponsorship, so can't argue with that. And then I just have generic neochrome lug nuts that I'll probably switch out for black ones in the near future. But that covers it for suspension and wheels. We're going to move on to brakes now. So for brakes, what I have are the STI Brembo brake swap. So bought them off eBay, uh, rebuilt them, even though they didn't actually need much rebuilding, I just got them repowder coated to like a charcoal gray. And the pads I'm running are Carlotech XP8. And then we have a, we have the StopTech stainless steel lines. And I think that, yeah, DBA 4000 slotted rotors. And I also forgot to mention, I have a braided clutch line as well, but yeah. So that's mainly it for performance. Now what we can do is talk about my exhaust. The exhaust I'm running is quite loud. Working from headers back. So the headers are the Fat House Fab 321 billet equal length headers with their Fat House Fab up pipe. And then we have the Tomei Catless Race down pipe. And then the cap back is the Tomei Extreme TI, which is an amazing exhaust, titanium, so super light. And the reason I didn't go external wastegate was it wasn't needed, it's not needed, although if I want to go for higher numbers, it definitely is needed. So that is the exhaust setup. I also have a nameless heat shield above the uh, downpipe, but that's it for the exhaust. Basically Tomei and Fat House Fat. So now we are going to move inside the car and I will show you the interior of my car. Moving on to the inside of the car, switch to a wide angle lens. First thing you notice is the deep the GT spec D-shaped steering wheel, uh, the RAM phone mount, Cobb access port with just a magnetic mount that you can buy off Amazon. We have the Sparco Evo seat with Sparco four point harnesses, planning to switch them out for six points in the near future. We, and then we have basically all the things you need for a Sparco seat to be, har uh, to be fitted into your car, base, slider, and side mounts, plus all hardware. Then we have some Alcantara work done by MD Interiors on Instagram. So we have my AC unit, head unit, shifter bezel, shift boot, e-brake boot, armrest. And then we also have a Legacy GT cup holder with the slider. I do not remember the exact name of the head unit, but everything, all these parts will be listed down in the description. So if I do miss one, they are down in the description. Oh yeah, also, we have 
the other AC vent is wrapped. And then I wrapped these little covers and faux suede as well as the A pillars. Oh yeah. He also did, see I'm forgetting things already, my sun visors in Alcantara. For LEDs, we have Brandon underscore STI on Instagram. LEDs all the way around. So map, dome, and trunk. Up here we have a hardwired Valentine V1 and a hardwired Blackview dash cam. Now for how to monitor the car's health besides the access port, we have gauges. So boost, oil temp, and EGT. They are stationed in a ATI gauge pod, triple gauge pod. And then we have the SMY. Yeah, there's the little dash cam talking. Then we have the SMY dual gauge cluster with oil pressure and AFR. And that's basically it for the inside up front. I have WeatherTech mats, but that's about it. So let's go ahead and move into the back seat of the car. That is Wilson. In the back seat, besides some jumper cables, a DJI Roan uh, controller, I took out the back seats. We only have the bench left. We have a Sparkle harness bar that I rattle can green. We have, which I need to find a better spot for, a fire extinguisher. And over there we have a shoebox which contains my GoPro essentials like extended uh, microphone, batteries, cases, stuff like that. And because this car runs on E85, it runs out super quick. I always carry a jug of E85 with me. And that's about it. And then in the very corner, we just have a first aid kit. Um, and then we have air fresheners. There are a bunch of stickers on the back too as well because who doesn't love stickers? So I guess now is probably the most exciting part for a lot of those, or a lot of people enjoy this. The scene points, the exterior parts, the parts that get you all the likes on Instagram. So I guess we'll start in the front, work our way back. So in the front, we have a ABS front splitter with a Basin R front lip, Plasti dip vents. I do have carbon fiber side vents, but I need 3M tape and they keep falling out, so that's a bummer. Grimspeed front mount, or front mount, Grimspeed front plate delete relocator kit. Probably butchering all these names, I forget. And then we have a GoPro mount underneath. If you guys ever are looking for a good spot, this one is really good. I recommend it. So if you don't have a front mount and you still have this little beam, low angle GoPro shots are really good for showing speed. We have a plate delete with my Instagram or my YouTube name. Hella horns, which are going to be painted white in the near future. Blacked out WRX. Blacked out headlights. Moving along the side. I am going to get a quick release bumper because this thing is sagging like no other. We have rally armor mud flaps in the front, not the back. The back doesn't matter, the front does because since I am wider, it sprays all across the car. We have blacked out WRX side badges, STI mirrors, a matte black sun visor, a gloss black roof wrap, my very first mod. <laughs> carbon fiber overlays um, or carbon fiber wrap on the B pillars. Yeah, rain guards, base in our side skirts. I will be taking this wrap off probably after you see this video. Vinyl styles, uh, tail light overlays, and then did the smoke. Debadged rear. We have smoked out reflectors that also act as brake lights, so when you press the brakes, they turn on. A backup camera off Amazon, forget the exact one, but when I looked to see if they had it again, they do not. An LOL at your VTEC. I will be getting a rear windshield wipe delete soon. And then we have a limo tint on all the back windows none on the front. I am running LEDs all the way around. So if we turn on the lights, so LED lights all the way around, LED switchbacks, LED 
high beam and regular daytime running lights, LED fog lights, which have a lens over them, so you can either have white or yellow. I do have an install video comparing them, so you guys can see that on my channel if you go farther back. If you just search LED install, you'll be able to find them. Now, I believe if we walk to the back, you'll be able to see. Yeah, so I also have LED blinker lights. But there, as you can see, the smoke tail lights turn on. So that is basically a walk around of my 2014 Subaru WX hatchback. So thank you for joining me on the walk around of my 2014 Subaru WRX hatchback. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I hope I covered everything. I hope I showed you guys everything. Till next time guys, please subscribe if you haven't. If you're new to the channel, please give this video a like and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take it easy.